Okay, so now we're going to talk about the process of building a high tunnel. Um, so mm -hmm. do you have any tips or things to keep in mind while building your high tunnel? Oh, yes. So we wanted to get it up before the season extension, but it snowed and rained um, like in October, November, really like we should have you should put it up like the season before. So let's say if like we like fall season, you needed to put it in so you can have it ready for next year, you know, or like for that that evening year, because it takes time to put it up. Um, because we didn't have a road. We had so many setbacks on our current farm um, where we didn't have a road and then it got muddy and where we put it is um, we wanted some barriers. So like you need to look for some tree lines so that there's not like straight winds that are going through your high tunnel. So the first is location. So I know that there we have like we don't have a lot of trees, but we have like two buffer, you know, um, that runs, um, I believe, north and south and east and west like this. So we put it right in, you know, right in that corner. Um, and it's a little bit lower land and we were trying to maximize our growing land on the other side of the creek. So ideally, of course, you know, we wanted it up higher, but then also we needed access to water for irrigation. So that way we didn't have to irrigate so far um, because knowing that it's season extension. So we wanted it closest to the road and then closest to the well and also, um, you know, something without wind barrier, uh, you know, some buffers to like help with wind. So you're not having straight winds, like blowing your high tunnel away. So I would say that would be the first tip is like locating what makes sense for you. Um, especially if like, you're trying to do season extension in like the winter and you're trying to access it. And let's say if the roads aren't shoveled or, um, you know, there's costs to like getting to your, uh, high tunnel. And then also, um, you know, getting water out there. So that would be the first thing. And then prepping the lot, like grading it is also important. So like the first um, one that we put up recently at the Hugo, that one was too, um, one side was like lower. So then when you pound your poles, you had to go um, not as deep. And then that makes your pole not as strong, right? Like you want, it, you want it to be a level playing ground and not everybody has money to, hire an excavator to come and like grade it out really nice and you have to like put more so luckily we realized that and I mean if you're customizing your um those poles you like in Zimmerman you could probably tell them like oh give me a longer pole for the two back you know but I think it's so complicated to like know your lay of your land before you put it down um especially if you're not an excavator or you don't know about like land grades you know um, so grading your land is important because that you have, and then also we were trying to like not take off the topsoil of that because that has organic matter and our, our lot that we bought there hasn't been farmed for the last like 10 years. They just had like hay in it. So that was one thing was we didn't want, we wanted to like go very little till on it, but unfortunately like we had to also get it ready and then the grass got too high where we couldn't pound in the poles. So you do have to prep the land, like at least do one one round of plowing or brush mowing. So that way you can get it down. So what we did was we just like till plowed everything over. And then um, the first tunnel, we did that. And so now the second tunnel, we got a little bit smarter. And when they put in the road, we paid a little bit more. I think it was like for an additional like thousand or 2000 just to grade it um, and then put back our topsoil on. So. So yeah, so prep, land prep for um, getting your high tunnel is very important and doing it before the growing season, you know, if you can get planning and timing that like would save you so much time because now all our, our tomatoes are ready and there's so much, you know, weather setbacks, there's rain. Um, and then like the amount of time we had money to rent the um, pounder to. So like you have to pound in your poles. So we had so many hours and so many days to pound it so that way we can, you know, be done with it. But if there's anything that requires you a second session, then it would just, so, so that would be my advice is like plan according to, um, you can never plan for weather. So like, just know that if you're putting it up this year, you know, unless if you hire someone or you're doing it for yourself, it's kind of nicer to hire out, you know, my husband is a carpenter, so he kind of has the numbers and the measurements, but if you've got like no idea of putting one up you you want to put it up the right way so that way like you don't have end up redoing it again 
Um, and I would say like when you stretch your plastic, one tip is like, um, make sure you're, um, you're pulling it when it's hot outside because plastic, when you pull it, we did it, our plastic had holes in our greenhouses and we were trying to pull it in the winter and now it's sagging because it wasn't warm enough and stretchy. So like, usually you want to get it at the peak of like when it's hotter, warmer weather and your plastic is more stretchy. And then when you lay it down onto your uh, poles and you buckle it down, it doesn't like um, expand. And then, and then of course you have like, you know, drops in your, um, and, and yeah, you need strong people to like pull it too. So there's it's just as many factors. So those would be like my tips to keep in mind as you're working on it. And then um, we're constantly measuring, you know, like you're measuring everything and you're not kind of eyeballing and we're leveling everything so you're leveling poles, you're leveling, um, you know, even the crossbars, uh, you're leveling the ground, um, everything needs to be leveled. How many people did it take to put the plastic on? Um, for the greenhouse, so this this one doesn't even have plastic on because we've had to set back it, but I want to say it was five, six of us. Um, uh, the both both project manager and both projects don't like a, a lot of people because they feel that more people than I think people think oh come out and like help us do it but sometimes it's like the more people the more things you have to fix because people <laughs> have like there's too many people yeah. in the kitchen so in a way it's almost nicer to have a smaller amount of people that are all coordinated as a team and understand that like there's one project goal in mind and that you know, one side ended up being like longer than the other. Um, it's like my parents and Panad and of course me. And so each of us had our own version of like <laughs> how to put up plastic. But yeah, um, I would say, yeah, six of us. Cause we had a, we had like a ball and we tied it and we threw it across and then people just pulled it a across. Um, so that took like three to hold and, and, and to look for like a non windy day. I mean, like for some reason, the day we pulled it was <laughs> crazy. So like, it was just hard like once you flip one side and the other side was and you couldn't like we couldn't um wait because winter was coming anyways and we had to you know put something on for the greenhouses but yeah i would just say you know like we were watching the wind and supposedly it was only supposed to be like 10 miles per hour but that day it was like 50 or something it was just crazy and so our that was like the worst day to pull <laughs> plastic <laughs> But yeah, those would be the main ones and like, just make sure that you have a good project manager or whoever's on there, like has a, has watched like the videos on how to put it up. So that way when they're out there, they're, you're not constantly, it's like do it yourself. Right. Um, so just make sure you, I Zimmerman tunnels, uh, high tunnels have, um, their videos on their website so you can watch them actually put the thing together so then when you go through it everybody on the team already knows oh this is the next step all right so do you want to explain what's going on in this picture yeah so this is um i know it, as you can see we uh pounded the post and then it was gonna rain so we just put like these black things in there so that water water doesn't get into the um but this is uh it, it took time to even get to this phase. Like we thought, oh, we're just gonna, you know, I'm very simple. I'm like, we're just gonna pound a bunch of posts. And of course my husband's the planner. So he's measuring the distance between each. And then we watch the video and we wanna make sure that like, so worst case is that if you're not measuring these correctly, like your high tunnel may be twisted. You know what I mean? Like it may like be going at an angle all the way down. So like making sure that the one pole is directly across from the other was so important. So we were pulling strings. So like, I don't have the video of like what actually went into the work of prepping this land or like brush mowing it and then like cutting the grass down and then prepping the land to put in the poles. And then we rented and basically we put the pounder um, in the back of the truck and we um, basically just pounded down. And then that took like all day. I want to say it took us three days total to just pound these poles and they get pounded. I want to say yeah, they're six feet, six feet tall, but yeah, a foot and a half in there. So that way you got four feet like sticking out. Um, so like some, like, you know, before me building a high tunnel, I didn't know that. Right. I would just thought, Hey, we're just going to go out there and put a bunch of poles in and hopefully they all level out. So yeah, there's actually some physics and math to, um, putting it up correctly too. So th this yeah, is the Yeah, do you get the phase. corners staked out first? 
Yep. So then we um, we had to yeah stake out the corner. We had to find out. And then the thing about our lot is that we are we have wetland. So then there's wetland setbacks. So we actually had to pay um, a wetland delineation too, which is different from a one. Uh, NRCS did like a, the uh, the survey, which is the one where they just tell you what areas may be wetland. Um, but you know, you see where the tree line is. We have a ditch that runs right along that road right there, and then um, like right along here, and then right over here. So we have to have setback um, from there. But because this is a temporary structure and it's not an actual building and we're not digging any basement or excavating, it was fine to be that far from it because it's for agricultural use. But if we were to like put up a building and we have to be, you know, safe of like the waterways. But yeah, so then we had to go down, stake out exactly where our four corners was. And then we had to measure. So I believe ours was like 30 by uh, 96. So we had to make sure that like we had enough. And then we had to plot the three on this lot. So we knew like some people like you would put it up and you'll say, oh, now I didn't make enough space in between each of the um, the other two. So we went and we like spaced out exactly where our next bed is. And I didn't have the photo of it, but the next one is like, I believe like five or seven feet away from the, um, from this one to the left. So, so yeah. Yep. So that's the angle view. We, this didn't show that. Yep. So this is the second part where we actually finally put up the purlins, um, up, you know, and so now all the pieces went in. Basically we, um, the next phase now is to now put in the baseboard so that it holds it down. And then, um, there's still like the doors, the side doors that we have to build, right. Um, to keep like the wind out and then of course pulling plastic and, um, making sure that our, our, um, what do you call it? The side panels are all gonna, we have to buy like wood and wood is like so expensive now because of lumber prices, but yeah, we have to buy, yeah, we have to like purchase the wood pieces and then all of those don't come with the kit so those are additional supplies that you're gonna have to buy on the side so like when you do your estimate like not everyone i estimated drip irrigation and i did the side doors but i forgot that to to estimate the wood panelings all along you know the 96 inch stretch for the side panel so my husband was like where's your numbers for that? And I was like, oh, I totally missed. <laughs> so that's one tip is like, remember that there's actually wood pieces that run along the base of your, um, to hold down, you know, cause that's where you're going to like wire in your plastic. So do you have a preference between like whether they're oriented north, south or east, west? Yeah. Like I think some people say, because we are in straight sunlight, I don't, we don't have an issue, you know, um, but I think some people for feng shui wise, they do in our community, but then others is just for like the supposedly how the sunlight comes into the, um, into the high tunnel. And I think the recommendation is, I don't remember, but I'll look it up. Um, I did go to like a high tunnel class once and I believe the orientation, um, what direction should a high tunnel face was one of the questions there. And it says that, uh, it's recommended high tunnel to capture the most light in winter. So if, like you have like a winter CSA, then they, uh, I think it's like 40 degrees latitude and the ridge should run east to west for locations south of 40 degrees latitude. The ridge should run north to south. So it depends on like where you are latitude wise um, that for, I think it's more for like maximizing for winter time. So if you, if you want, like, for example, the fall season extension and you want more sunlight, then, like, the ridge has to be lined, um, I believe you're right, to, like, I think east, it says here, east-west, yep. Mm -hmm. But because of the sake of, like, land accessibility, like, that was the only way to fit all three onto one. It was, like, more like um, the orientation of the lot for us.